Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Could surgeons use a patient's own anatomy to create 3D printed life-size organ models to map out challenges ahead of time, making surgery more precise, efficient, and less invasive? Is it possible? It already is. Because every day we're doing what's never been done. Learn more at mayoclinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. Before we start today, I just want to remind you about our friends at Thistle Farms. Ah, Thistle Farms. A true beacon of hope. That's right, Dan. Thistle Farms shines as a light in a whole lot of darkness by providing healing, housing, and employment for women survivors of trafficking, prostitution, and addiction. The way they employ survivors while also funding their mission is by selling beautiful lotions, scrubs, essential oils, and my family's favorite, candles they are handmade by the women in their program lighting a candle is so significant to the community of graduates and current residents of thistle farms the organization has lit a candle at their headquarters every day for 25 years to symbolically light the way home for the next woman coming off the streets you can help light the way too by getting a candle for yourself or for someone you love at thistlefarms.org i cannot imagine a more intentional hope-filled gift you could give this holiday season fantastic and don't forget to use the code all one word Deck the Hallmark at checkout to receive 15% off your purchase. Oh boy, Brian, I can't wait to set the mood for our next family movie night with Thistle Farms candles everywhere. You mean it's like gonna be us? Like you and me watching? Sure, why not if you Hallmark say so? Christmas? It's going to be a good smelling movie night, I can tell you that right now. Here's today's episode. <laughs> Hi, oh, I'm Brian, I'm ready, and I love Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Brian, I'm ready, and I like Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Dan, I'm not ready, and I despise Hallmark Christmas movies, and this is the Deck the Hallmark Hallmark Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. Brandon and friends host his podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Da, 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 da. Hello, everybody. Oh, Merry boy. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Goodness gracious. Uh, a couple of things I want to get out of the way really quickly. We have been bombarded by people asking, are you going to be at Christmas Con this weekend? Well, a lot of people, people have been asking. Have been asking. We are. We are going to be at Christmas Con this weekend. Right. So come say hi. Please. You've got a lot of fun swag available. Some swag exclusive. To the con. Exclusive. To the con. Not available anywhere else. I saw Con Sclusi live. Wow. He was phenomenal. Con Sclusi. Sclusi. Easy for you to say. Yeah. Con Sclusi. Sclusi. Yeah. Con yeah, Sclusi. I couldn't con get in. Sclusi to get into a, the gig, you have to be able to say the band. Yeah, that, and I were out in a hurry. It. Yeah, it was yeah, just was a one. Real. It was an artist, singular. Uh, now, on on Friday, Brian and Brian are going to be there. I won't be there yes. on Friday. Uh, so if you don't, if you just really hate me, go Date on Friday. Night, right? And uh, they day where uh, Brian, 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 and I have a full day of it. We are getting into um, Jersey Mm -hmm. relatively early. And I did the math and I think we have enough time to skirt on over to the Rockefeller tree. Brian's never seen it. Nope. We're going to show it from Massachusetts. Never seen the Rockefeller tree. We will. How many times have you been to the city? Manhattan. Twice. Twice. Oh yeah. Well, we got Boston. What do we need? Sure. You need for? plenty. What do we need New York City for? <laughs> you really only gone twice. It, Dan, I avoid Boston as yeah. much as possible. I'm That's not right. going to yeah, shoot over That's, 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 That's fair. You know? Now, I will say. I've if seen some, one city. You've seen them all. If somebody can. How dare you? <laughs> if somebody could tell me this. Dan, you've parked in the city before. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is what I'm worried about. Parked in the city Getting. where the heat is on. Now, I don't know <laughs> where we parked, where you parked. It was like not. Times Square, not 30 Rock. So, like, if anybody out there have any tips and tricks for us, because we just want to hop out and see the tree. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, that may be tough. So, I mean, when we parked, we were going to a movie, so you just buy it and pay for a garage. Yeah, and they I think we just it. throw the hazards on and just leave it anywhere. You just leave it right there. Just on leave fifth. it right there. Yeah. So, if anybody wants to give any tips and tricks, um, Pig Bones, you got a place we could park? Pig Bones. Pig Bones. Pig bones. <laughs> I love driving to Manhattan. Now, it's I, wonderful. I got to tell you this, Bri. Yeah. As of right now, there and I don't want to jinx it, but there is a. I'm chance. not even going to say it. There's a chance of some sort of thing 
falling from the sky at some point during the weekend. Yep, Saturday morning. Magical. Man, that would be something. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? At Christmas Con, some stuff is happening. Stuff happening in the sky. You don't want to say snow. Damn, that <laughs> coming. If it doesn't snow now, it's on you. It's on you. Yep. Yep. I'm going to put it on your gravestone when you You're die put it on before my you, before me. <laughs> It, I, it's going to say, gonna Dan, sure of it. Dan, uh, uh, 1981 to 20, 1983 to 2023. I got 81 covered here. <laughs> beloved. <laughs> to when? 23? Beloved <laughs> by some. Next year. Known by many. Hated by Bran because he made the snow go away. Jinx the snow. Yeah, I, like I'll, I'll work on the snow jinx. It's like a maybe snow showers and the, Stop the chance talking. is so low. I did not ruin this. Yes, you did. The chance is forty one percent. Bran. God had his sleeves up. He was getting he ready. Was, he was putting on the ritz, Bran. He, he was, was putting getting, on the ritz, and you know it. He was getting ready to put a bowl of joking. snow in the snow the machine. Machine. Maker. And now he heard you say it, and he oh, said, well, take it out. 40% chance of rain and snow showers mixed we together. You don't want that. You don't want any part of that. I don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that. oh. Saturday night, it says one to three inches of snow expected. We might not get out of it. Guys, are we going to get snowed in at Christmas Con? That sounds awful. I, I think you know <laughs> that one to three inches in New Jersey is nothing. Yeah, we're not. That's not, not I love snow. Anything. Somebody said, Dan, want a Grinch in the, in the comments. I love snow. I might love snow more than Bran. I know that, that that's hard for anybody to believe. It's not possible. Bran and I talk anytime in the 15-day forecast. <laughs> there's a chance in Greenville. We are both like, you see the, the sled. You see a week from Sunday? Do you see? <laughs> you don't and then say Bran's then. got all the models in. I'm like, what's the European model say? Because <laughs> yeah. that's the only we one do. that ever gives us snow. We, we do a whole bit. We do a whole bit. And then you're like, European model says 20 inches. And I'm that's like, we can do. yeah. And then we get nothing. And I'm so I was so jaded last year. I was like I was looking at the models and they were like this could be the one. And I'm like it's not going to be the one. When it was the one, and then it was the one. And now this year I'm like we're getting ten inches, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Boy. go. Dude. The great thing, the the thing that we always have to keep in mind though with snow around here is it's it is wonderful and we love it. Everything is shut down for a week. Yes. So there you, there is a there is a week there where you have. Uh, kids yeah. at home, yeah. snow outside, and you've got to you've got to figure out yeah. um, how to handle that situation. It's not, yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah, but my kids love the snow. Yeah. Like, go nuts for it. What's nice now, um, and what's also funny is I, I um, how many years into this here in South Carolina, and I still don't have like a proper sledding vessel. Like last Why few, would you? last few years, but now, but every time I do it, I'm like, man, I need to get a real sled. Cause yeah. last year I used a lid of a big Tupperware thing. Yeah, like and I yeah. slid down the road, Yikes. which our road you know is, that's a good road. Yeah, it's a good little good road. road. It's a good road for it. You know it's what you should use road. is a, um, a tube, like a blow up tube. You can use it in the pool in the summer. And in the wintertime, you just throw that thing down a hill and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll yeah, take that. That'll work for do, it. Can we use one of your inflatables? That, that would work. What? Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I got, got that those. big flamingo yeah. or the shark. One of those big shark that. things. Yeah, big right? shark things. I don't know if they're still in flight, but we'll see. Let's talk about fabled holiday, everybody. A fabled holiday. Was it fact? Was it fable? Mm. Let's, find, Let's out. find out. Was it just forgettable? Is, Let's find are out. We are, are we human? Are we dancer? Are we dance? um, a lot of questions on the table. <laughs> December 3rd, 2020. <laughs> Do they know it's Christmas time at all? <laughs> oh, gosh. You can dance if you want to. Yeah. Mm. That's not a question. <laughs> Suggestion. It's an option. It's an option. <laughs> it will, something like that. Uh, the movie kicks off with uh, a dad reading a fantasy book about uh, the Wonder Brook, which is like a. I don't know, what would you call it? A fake town. Yeah, imaginary village. Yeah. It's like a fantasy Christmas book. And uh, he's reading to his daughter. Her friend Anderson comes over. They're hanging out. They're reading the book some more. They see a little flyer for a free stay at Wonder at the Gingerbread Inn or something. Uh, they're just like, it's like that's weird. They throw it over there. Three months later, we find out that Talia's dad died, and she has to move. Anderson comes over, says goodbye, and Talia gives um, him his own copy of the Wonderbrook 
Christmas book. Flash forward, Talia is an adult. She owns a bookstore and is trying to publish her own book. Her hotshot uh, author friend, Sloan, brings her manuscript to her publisher. They don't love it. We see Anderson as an adult. He is a surgeon in distress. He walks out. He's breathing hard. He's like wiping his nose. He's clearly having a tough time. He calls his boss, Chief, and uh, says, I need a break. I got to get out of here. Uh, we meet some other folks as well that I don't know their importance at this point, uh, such as Keith and Diane, a couple that's struggling, and Charles, who is an older fella who really misses his late wife. Anderson comes to Talia's bookstore, and they quickly realize who each other's, who they are, who each other. You got it. Wait for it. Here we go. They know they they know who they are, and uh, they hug and they decide that they should catch up and exchange numbers. Uh, later that night, Talia tries to call her friend, but somehow ends up calling the Gingerbread Inn, which she's like, "What is going on?" A lady named Judy Judy um, is on the line and is like, "Hey." I guess you're going to be taking us up on our all expense trip pay to the Gingerbread Inn. All expense and trip pay. <laughs> what are you talking about? You get it. And uh, she's like, I wasn't, but I guess I am now. So she goes. Oh, go hot apple pie. Oh, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, and guess who ends up showing up due to a detour and some car trouble? Frosty. Anderson. Oh, man. <laughs> Good guess, though. Uh, turns out Keith and Diana and Charles from earlier, they're also all there. From some sort of mysterious force has brought them. Is it the Lord? Maybe even the Lord. Maybe even fabled, said, fabled city of old book. Maybe even Christmas Miracle. Maybe even Santa Claus. Maybe even chimes playing. Maybe the even book. God winks. No. Mm-hmm. Talia keeps feeling like she knows this place from somewhere, but the owner's like, no, I don't think you know. Uh, Talia and Anderson hang out and go to a Christmas tree lighting. They do fun activities around the, the town. Uh, they find out that they're both single. Uh, the group is hanging out at a campfire one night, and they all realize that they're, they're all familiar with the Wonderbrook Christmas book. And they're like, uh, and they're also all here kind of by accident, by chance, by some sort of force. Talia is like, I'm going to try to figure this out. No way, I The uh, couple uh, of folks, the, the couple, they talk it out, they, uh, they make up, and they leave. Out of there. Uh, Anderson opens up to Talia about why he's here, how he did a uh, relatively routine surgery and ended up losing the uh, surgery, the surgery. You're a surgeon, the patient. (laughs) You're going to present this scenario. You can can dance if you want (laughs) to. But look, follow me. Even reading words. <laughs> follow me there, though. Maybe even. Yeah, you're in it. You're in you're the zone. A, you follow me here, though. You're a surgeon, which means you're sir. You to, to the surgery. To the surgery. To the surgery. No. You're the surgeon. I'm the surgery. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. no. Anyway, so he's kind of, and she's like, he's like, don't tell anybody this. I'm just, that's why I'm here, basically. So she's definitely not going to tell anyone. <laughs> um, so she kind of like keeps pushing this book thing. Like, you think maybe this something's going on here? You guys think maybe something's going on here? Uh, the older fella, Charles, is falling for one of the workers. The worker was a real grumpy gal, and now she's kind of like, Ooh, Mildred? Yeah. Mildred, yeah, maybe not. So grumpy now that Charles is here. So finally, she basically accuses them all of being in on it. It's like, you guys are all doing something, blah, blah, blah. I'm here because of this. And then she's like, and Anderson here because he killed a guy. And then um, he's like, come on. Like, for real? She feels awful about spilling the beans about Anderson. They say some things that they will later regret to each other. And he's like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. But he doesn't get far because he gets word that Charles had a heart attack. Yeah. Fell right down. Thought it was a heart attack. Thought it was a heart attack. It was just uh, sugar. Low blood pressure. You just needed some salt. Some salt. salt. You need more sodium. 
Salt. <laughs> salt. Salt is dry. That okay. sounded awfully. Yeah, awfully sorry. Pretty. So, anywho, uh, no, that's he, salt. he ends up coming back, and she Shwing. she finds out who. Uh, she decides that she's like, oh, I'm inspired by this place. I think I want to write a follow-up book of about the uh, about uh, Wonderbrook, and they all are like, hey, awesome, because guess what? You were right, and this is about the book, and it was about to be out of, like, no one's coming here anymore because no one knows this book. She's like, I'm going to write a follow-up. A year later, the book is published. It's a big hit, and I hope that the Gingerbread Inn lasts for many years to come. And that, my friends, was a Fable Holiday. <laughs> we did it. You Let's take right a quick break. Brain. I'm good. Good. I'm good. Let's take a quick break and we'll uh, come back and we'll break this movie down here on Deck Dan, I'm so frustrated right now. Why? So frustrated right now. I'm looking, trying to find the perfect gift and I'm so frustrated right now. Dude, well, could you take a deep breath and tell me more about it? I'm looking for the perfect gift. Let me explain to you what I envisioned the perfect gift being and you tell me if it exists. Okay. A digital picture frame Uh that I can send pictures to from anywhere on my phone, an app, maybe even an email address, maybe even, (laughs) and it just kind of keeps showing and it scrolls through pictures because static pictures, it's just like, I feel like I'm just like, oh, they're going to keep growing. To know that much information and not know about skylight frames is absurd to me, Brand. Skylight Skylight frames. frames has you covered. My mom has one. Yeah? Your mom has one. It be- does. I should know about that. It is an amazing gift. You get up-to-date pictures. They can run through as quick as you want them. You can deliver them by email or the app. It's the best gift. If you don't know of a family gift this Christmas season, how could you not go with Skylight Frame? Do you know they have two options now? Two, yeah, they do. They got I've a big just, boy. Yeah, 10 and 15-inch yeah. frame. Um, I, I've been, just been handed this from Trace. There's a special offer. Oh, boy. $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code Hallmark. Uh, that's right, $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code Hallmark. That is, are you ready? S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com. What's that promo code? Hallmark. Hello. Uh, it's Bran. It's Brian, it's yep. Dan, and yep. we make up Deck the Hallmark. Yep. It's great to we be here today. Do. We're talking about a fabled holiday. Uh, let's break it down and let us uh, let us <laughs> let us talk about this movie with four segments. Let's start with the hot take, and let's start with Brian. Thank you, Brian. Before I do, I have a little special surprise for you guys. I don't know if you realize this. Gosh, it's December seventh. <gasps> Oh, it's a good thing we're here at the Christmas tree. Now, I took, if you've been following along, uh, I took the liberty of go ahead and jotting down the lines from the movie. Oh, you oh took it to the same. Oh, my goodness. Do we have any volunteers yeah, for a Yeah, absolutely. Her? Absolutely. Let's yeah. Just these up right here. All right, Craig. The bolded line. lines okay. are, that's your line. So, if it's okay. bold. All right. All right are you ready? Scene, action. Wait a minute. You don't have a Christmas tree yet? Oh, you're just doing the math on that. It's just, it's December 7th. You seriously don't have a tree? No, I don't. Okay, <laughs> we're going to fix that. Yes, we are. That's actually why we're here. So, what do you think of this? Uh, it's a little small. Yeah. Yeah. I found the one. The tree. <laughs> Scene. Felt for sure like there was another another, yeah, another round of it. Felt for really sure good. there was another. Man, me too. Those, At least that's it's December we, 7th. Yeah, that's a good thing it's we're December here. December 7th, so. You seriously don't have a tree? You don't have a tree? That's why we're here, so. All right, well, let's fix that. That's why we're here. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yeah, Great job. Welcome. Great welcome. job. So, glad we got through that. Yeah. So, my uh, my hot take here, if we can get back to the uh, yeah. the movie here. The, right mo- the business at hand. Uh, yeah, the business. So, I love narration. I real- I know that. We, about yeah, it. we've established that, yeah. And something I realized during this movie was I like first-person narration. This was third-person narration and so it for i thought i was gonna love the narration throughout and it just i wasn't loving it and i realized it's it's a first person narration wonder years type of narration that i'm into but i still like the fact that this was narrated and the way it went through like sort of as a storybook chapter wise and things like that uh brooke DRC obviously great goes without saying 
Uh, Rochelle Greenwood, who played Judy, she was the queen, the innkeeper queen. Mm-hmm. I thought she was awesome. Her and the husband, I thought were great in this. Like they, they felt really fun. Um, and John Grove, who, John Grouse actually was Charles. John Grove, we don't talk Grove, about. No, him. we don't. I wouldn't <laughs> no. bring him up again I on the no, show. Not a million so, years. At his character, Charles, I was sort of rolling my eyes a lot at him, but yep. there were other scenes where I thought he nailed it, and I wanted more of him for some reason. I wanted his story to take kind of take precedence and take the front seat, but uh, sometimes. It, he, he would spoil it a little bit. But I really liked his his whole storyline. Um, unfortunately, this will end up a little bit low on my list. I do love the idea, though. the Taking a beloved story from your childhood, building a world around it, and throwing unsuspecting people into that who are familiar with the story and have to figure it out, I think, that's a, I think that would be like a great play that you do on a nightly basis and you pull in people from the crowd. <laughs> on a nightly you know, basis? Or night in, a weekly night basis. Wow. You go back and you do it again. Something, or, or a, uh, uh, a um, skit in a show or something like that. But as a movie, like, it was, it was okay for me. But the idea of it, that you create this whole world, everybody is acting in this world, and you're throwing people into it and they have to just react the whole time to what's being presented to them. I like that idea. Just the movie, as, as a movie, as this, this was put together, it just... It just, I don't know. I feel like it would be better as a live thing where people who are totally unsuspecting are thrown in the middle of it. So I you're talking like about improv. Yeah. Yeah, but but the actors aren't improving. They're, they're, it's sort of like a world is built. The actors know their character and what is supposed to happen. And they put the unsuspecting people in the situation and they have to react it's to like it. like audience members that yeah. have been called? Yeah, okay. it's a show. I mean, it's a full-on show. So it's improv. I guess so, but there's still scripted out parts. And <laughs> Who's a, on it, second? It, it's it's I December seventh, third base. You don't have a tree, so that's where I, I kind of landed on. I love the idea. The movie was just okay for me. Uh, some of the actors really stood out, and I thought were a fun time. And uh, that's where I'm at. You don't want to give any specific. I Charles, did. I did. Charles, yeah, I did. Judy, 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 Charles, Charles on Judy, an occasion. Judy, Judy. Uh, Brooke, do you say there? So question. let me. Dorsey. So Dorsey, here's Dorsey. here's Dorsey, what I uh, I I feel like. What we have here is something that like could have been really special, a really fun idea. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we to get there, we either needed to go even f- harder with magic or back off because I'm still foggy. Yep. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what the chime was. <laughs> I don't like there are things that I, I, I still I have a lot of what the hallmarks for this movie. Mm. I'm still foggy on some things. And I feel like. This movie, this is just me guessing, making some assumptions here, but I bet that this movie um, originally was probably heavier on the magic, yeah. and it's been it was uh, scaled back a bit due, uh, because of because Hallmark wanted to do mm-hmm. that, which is their prerogative. So that was my thing here is I just wasn't sure what it was. Basically, I don't know what it is. The other thing that I like wished also was to that point, I wish I had more of a connection with the narrator. Mm. They went really hard on the narrator yeah. early on. And then they do this and thing. And then they just he's... used it to get us to commercial break. Yeah. And then they tie it in at the end by saying that the narrator is the one who wrote the original book. Mm-hmm. And at, by that point, I don't care. And also, right? They make I, him I, seem like he's some big deal when they show him. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I was supposed to remember the illustrations from the from the first minute of this movie. So, like, I would have rather it have been somebody narrating this movie. Like, I also love narration, and I think they yeah. could have really leaned into that as well. Um, they were doing so many cool things in this movie: the narration with the storybook, the the illustrations turning into the movie. There was so much cool here, um, but I just think we either needed to go harder with it or pull back because I left more confused than excited, which is obviously not the goal. Um, but I appreciate the uh, the aspiration, and I hope that we uh, keep going with it. Dan, yeah, this movie's insufferable. I like. Look, it is a high concept idea with a low IQ execution. I, I love the idea of what we're trying to do here, which is turning a story into real life through Christmas magic. That seems like it should be on Hallmark every year somehow. And instead, we get a town that for the better part of the runtime has five people in it. 
helping out five strangers because a book isn't in circulation as much. And that's the best I can figure on that. It was a mess, a mess of a movie that I really, really hated, like actively hated. And I think it it's because of what you said, Brand. I think it's because it doesn't commit to any level of magic. It's just kind of like trying to have all of the things be possible, whereas I have been consistent, and Brand for sure, if you commit to an absurd level of Christmas magic, you have a much better chance of me embracing what you're trying to do than if you try to have this grounded in the real world mm. and also be as loony bins nuts so as this movie is. Uh, to have as much of that, like, in and out of every commercial break and the narrator and all this stuff, like... And then to have a movie that just uh, takes place like a one-act play with like a very small cast, it's just a mess. It just doesn't have the wherewithal to pull this thing off. And a as it stood, I was really hating life. It's one of my least favorite of the year. Bottom 10 for me for sure. Were you guys as confused by the narration as I am? Like I, the bring it back at the end and it's the original author yeah. as if it's like a big reveal? It felt late yes. for that. It felt like there was some big thing I was missing when they revealed that that guy's the author. Yeah, yeah. And there wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. He just was. Yeah. He was just there. He just was. He just was. Um, let's get to the feels. Brian? So I did have, uh, I had some negative feels, but I'm not going to focus on those because I did have one like legit really good feel, and it was the tree at Wonderbrook. Dare I say it was wonderful outside when they lit up this tree. It looked phenomenal. I, I did comment on the tree. Yeah, it was a beautiful tree. Thumbs up. Yeah. There's, there's a thumb. thumbs he up. He agrees. There's we one. all three, yes. three thumbs up. Which is unusual for a thumbs up situation. <laughs> also, I was. Uh, it's unusual for a thumbs up uh, situation. There's no doubt about that. I was uh, just as a double decker proud because our double decker, Shannon Dubose, here, she's friends with the writer of oh, this movie, E.S. Really? E. Dolan. Yeah, E.S. Dolan's the, the writer. And so I was just rooting for her the whole time. Yeah. It was really cool to have that. And connection. I would wager to say E.S.'s script uh, probably had a lot more or less magic in it. Mm. My guess is that this was a Hallmark situation. Yeah. And that's pure conjecture i can't yeah. imagine anyone's first draft being this sure. this seems like a compromise of everything mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so i was just proud to have that you know good for her so That's something that gives me feels on a regular basis is when and i wish there was more of it you get some people you just like you get a few people together and you have people around them that are like doing something and it's all kind of like made up, like on the fly. Mm. Oh, I think you're talking about improv. <laughs> and it's like nightly. Yeah, it's like nightly. And some it people have like feel. characters, but they still bring right. up the others. But they bring like up. They're unsuspecting. And they're like, no. yes. Yeah. No, it's not and quite. sometimes there's callbacks. I don't know. You think that's improv? No. 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 no not no, no, quite. No, no. Not, it, not, it might be like under the umbrella, but it's, it's like... <laughs> It's like you're people. What do you mean it's almost, under the umbrella, like, like under the big top? There's like improv a circus? involved, but it's a scripted event that people are. They have. Is roles. it like Murderville on Netflix? Maybe. <laughs> would you call that improv? I would call the it the person improv. who is there that is the guest is doing improv. Everyone else is doing improv, but has a skeleton script okay. they're working with. All right, so I'm I'm land I'm there now. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I was I couldn't see the forest through the trees. Uh, Fair. It's improv. I love this as an improv situation. Great. Um, I uh, my my feels was early on. I was like really in. Like I and they you like were off the bat. Off you the bat, just, I was like with the narration. I thought the the book. The illustrations to real life, pulling back, doing, they did it. They went so hard in the first five yeah. minutes and I was all in. And then that just, it, and then it just like, was like, okay, we'll just keep going back to it. Like at the end of every scene. And that bummed me out for early on. I was all the way in. I loved it. It's more of that. Cause I just thought it was so fun. Dan. Yeah. Search my heart. Found nothing. Absolutely not. Good. We'll take a you quick break. Use the tree too. If you want. No, I'm good. No. I gave a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's Let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come back um, to this uh, scripted, but also... Yeah, not. Uh, also not. Some might call it improv. Some might. Somebody would call this improv. Yeah. Here on Take the Hallmark on WCAL. The Laser.
I was going down the mountain and I saw my friend Lou. He was having a good time and I thought you should too. Then I asked my good friend Lou, what are you doing over there? Go! I said, I don't know, but won't you come on over here? Uh, that's, that's something we're working on. <laughs> it's a two-man show. <laughs> Luke and my friend. That's not improv. That's something we're working on. Yeah, no, that's scripted. That was scripted. A lot of scripts. That's something that we're working on. In there. That's something that we're working Where on. Where are they and what are they doing? You're going to have to stu- tune into like <laughs> third act to find out. It's a waiting for Godot situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's get to the wait. Well, let's start with you, Brian. Brian, yeah. what, what are you waiting? What do you want? Sure. Uh, so just I just this is obvious. We all know this. Nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got a surgeon who just tells the chief of surgery, I'm out. I'm pulling myself, coach. I'm out. And then she owns a bookstore that she just will, shuts down on a whim. Yeah, like, see ya. She, Local bookstores do so well, you can take weeks off. Yeah, of I guess so. <laughs> That's the thing. I guess They're so. They're thriving right now. Yeah. I mean, everybody just yeah. popping up on every corner local yeah. bookstores. Yeah, it's, these seem like more of a pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> Improv all above board. Uh, so when Charles <laughs> orders a drink... Uh, from the tap when he walks into the um, the, the pub for yeah, nobody, yeah, yeah, the tavern. She pours it, and it is like the loudest pour. <laughs> and I was trying to figure <laughs> out like what does that sound like. And there were so many things. Like it just it was not a tap pour. No, <laughs> it was so gosh, dude, no, loud. Uh, and then she goes when she does pour. She picks the tap right at the front of the bar. When behind her, there are a dozen taps. What are, or, what are in those taps? Ask the guy what he wants to drink. You have so yeah. many taps. Um, yeah, so they did have the nice Christmas tree. Beautiful Christmas tree. But when they did, they did this weird thing where um, they do the countdown from what, what, five, three, two, one, whatever it was. And when they get to zero and he lights it, the tree's behind them. So they all have to very quickly turn around at the exact moment that it's being lit. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Uh, behind the back tree lighting. The old behind the back yeah. tree lighting. I haven't Got seen him. one of those yet. So that was really funny. Uh, and then, so they were doing one of the, uh, the things they were doing is their Wonder Week. Dr. A tastes the hot chocolate, and he thinks that he can now, because he can taste the hot chocolate, he thinks he can now make hot chocolate, and he says he's going to add it to his list of things that he can cook. <laughs> Good. Uh, so Dr. A, <laughs> add that to the resume. <laughs> add a boy. Uh, I'll stop on this one. Story hour. Anderson told Talia, Diane, and everybody... She, I'm sorry. Anderson told Talia and Diane, who were talking upstairs, that everybody was heading downstairs for story hour. And they get down there, and Talia says, oh, this is like the story hour at my store. And Izzy goes, the little girl, she goes, what's a story hour? Like, you're sitting, <laughs> What? Yes. She was sitting in the chair for story hour, and she goes, what's a story hour? Good and then gracious. Talia explains. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you guys can, can go right ahead. Um... So I'm foggy on this. What am I to believe, boys? Because when she accidentally gets in contact with the gingerbread and she's told that, hey, good thing you called because there's only two more spots available, right? Mm-hmm. She does. Towards the end of this movie, they're like, we're going, like, we can't <laughs> keep doing this. Yeah. Because no one reads a book anymore. No one has no a book. No one reads a book anymore. No one, no one reads anymore. And no one's coming. Well, we can't, we can't have it both ways. Guys, either there's only two spots left, and then it gets filled up with her and Ryan and um, uh, uh, Anderson, and the book is magic, and it's no matter the year, is bringing people to the inn. That's right. Or the inn is a for is for profit, and, and they're trying. They can't get Did people they live to, there full time. I don't know, Dan. I it's don't so know what stupid. it is. Either there's two spots available, then they get filled and they're sold out, or they're a struggling company. That's right. I don't yes. know what it is. Yeah, I'm agreed. so confused by it. Um, Brooke, I love you so much. <laughs> I've never seen anybody eat a candy cane hook first. I'm not saying you're wrong for it. I'm I just am. saying, no, I'm not saying you're wrong for it. I'm just saying I've never seen it. I've never seen someone eat a candy cane hook first. Have you ever seen somebody eat a candy cane hook first? I, not that I can think of. No. I, I'm hook not, first. I'm going to give it a try. You did inspire me to try a new thing because maybe oh, I... maybe to the vlog. Maybe I've been doing it wrong all this time. It's possible. Probably not. But, but it did make me go wait what while I saw it, and so I had to include it legally. Um, guys... 
In the comments, everyone's popping off saying they eat it hook first. <gasps> what? What? Yeah, I don't believe it. Not just one person, like multiple people wow. saying they do it. You know, the, 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 um, the thing here that's interesting is all the people that are saying hook first are of the women variety. And we're, huh. we are, we're fellas. Yeah, that's, that, yep, all that's accurate. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. A lot don't. of eat the hook first. Okay. Great. So there you have it. There you have the, it. There's the social divide. I that is like. fascinating. I had no idea. I had eat no idea first. this whole time. Um, there is a fella in this movie who is the husband of the woman running the, the yes. Yes. Okay? Yep. yep. And in every scene that he's in, he finds a way to almost fall down. Yeah. Like he's just kind of like they falling say the down. End, he's the, the, the whatever. But in the the young, book, the that's a kid? thing. No, no, no. no. The no. husband. No, the dude. Her the, husband. The younger guy. The younger Jake. guy. Yeah. Jake. They say at the end, he's, he's the like town. The, the fool or something. The, fool. the town yeah. fool. And he's like, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, yeah. But is that like, is that. Is part of it is not being able to walk. Like a jester. <laughs> he's part like of a it? jester. Yeah. Like a clown. So, like. Yeah. Which is still an, another. Question, yeah, I guess. Which yeah, is like yeah. how much of this is magic versus them doing a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My last one is um, they're walking and they're all they have these tiny little bells in their hands yeah. and they're ringing them like this, and the 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 bell sound that they decided to go with in post is uh, the sound of a like a, a a real big bell choir like dum 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 <laughs> dum just tiny little bells dum 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 no and they yeah they're just tiny they all got the same bell all the same bells but they all are having um, amazing sound come out of these bells yep. so congratulations to the bell maker of that one Dan uh yeah Mildred is like from a Stephen King novel right like the terrifying yeah. like evil look all the time pub owner in this fictional town and then she goes completely psycho at one point in this movie and i was like are she gonna murder somebody are we gonna actually have somebody murdered at one point i believe she says i'm over it as the kids say <laughs> and he says well get under it that was a great line i wrote that down <laughs> i love that she thinks only the kids out there are saying i'm over it yeah Everyone has said I'm over it as at some point or another. Um, this is the worst fake snow of all time. Not the worst fake snow of 2022. Of all the Hallmark movies I've ever seen, there's a scene in this movie where Ryan and Brooke are walking down a path. Everything is green. Everything is green. And then in between the two of them, if you look in between their legs and their in, in the background, you will see it's a cotton blanket. Like, there's space in between yeah. the ground this and the blanket. This is like 2015, 2016 bad. It is, it's embarrassing. It's an embarrassing level of fake snow. Uh, and I'm over it, as the kids say. <laughs> well, get under it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, there is another couple here at this fa fabled town. They are on the verge of divorce, and they're having a conversation in their room, their hotel room. And there is a champagne cart in that room yes. with no less than a dozen glasses on it. How many glasses do two people need? Uh, I don't, like, how many time. possible glasses do two people need? What are you doing? I saw candy cane. Oh, you're going to try it first. Hook first. You're going to oh, do it. The hook's breaking. Oh, no. That ruins the fun of it. Uh, at the end, for the first time in this movie, we see people other than the five people running the town. Yep. And they're all walking through the city. In fact, there's some famous violinist that you knew. Uh, Lindsay, I don't know who Sterling. Lindsay Sterling. Lindsay Sterling. And uh, Ryan and Brooke are walking. And Brooke says, my dad, uh, look at all this pageantry. My dad would have loved it. And Ryan Pavey says, what do you mean? What do you mean? What does she mean? He would have loved the pageantry of this party. I don't, what about that is not understandable. I'm very, very confused. I, I just like, there's not a lot there to mess with, Ryan. It's, it's just exactly what she said is what she means. Mm -hmm. And that about covers it. I, I don't understand. Um, but last, and I have to not talk about this. Brand? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. It's just stuck in there. Candy canes are impossible to open. We need to come up with a solution to that. And I think we're all on board with that. Yeah. They are. This guy named Charles looks like he's having a heart attack. Ryan Pavey, the surgeon, comes to his rescue. He leans down to hear if he's breathing, and we immediately cut to a scene where Ryan Pavey closes the door and says, he had low blood pressure. It looks a lot like a heart attack. Well, how did he fit? He had no equipment. 
did he have like a, a, a thing that he was taking the blood pressure with? Like He's got an app. He is like literally laying there looking app? like he's dead. And we just cut to the scene where he's like, yeah, it wasn't anything. It was just give him a bunch of salt and he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. I'm starting to think that we're in the minority when it comes to the Panic. hook situation. Mm -hmm. I never eat the hook first. I would never even have thought to do so. No, 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 no. Because the hook is what you hold. You Absolutely. hold it, but you can. It's it's got a. If I eat the hook first, it's gonna like I'm, my hands are gonna get sticky. Yeah. You're right. But you can like easily see hook here. No, see hook see here. Hook. It's you want to go to the what's the Hallmark? Yeah, let's what the Hallmark. Uh, Brian, yeah, go sure. ahead. <laughs> I'll just two quick ones here. Um, so. Well, I did have one that was, what the heck is this place? But yes. that's a little bit. That is the what the hallmark of the whole movie. <laughs> but yes. do, I was wondering, do the people age? Like, are they stuck in the So many tale? questions here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then the Icy Connection dating app. Is this for <laughs> snowmen only? Like, can anybody join this? Just, I'd like to hear more about this uh, dating app. So my problem with this is like, when, when Jake says that he's the Joker or whatever, and he says someone has to do it, it makes me think that they're all actors, right? That it's not oh, like, sure. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I still, that's what I keep coming back to is I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the bell. Yeah. I don't know the bell. How do they keep track of who has a book? Who has been given a book because she bought a book and gifted it to Anderson. So how do they possibly know that Anderson has a book? Or is the book some sort of is it some sort of Jumanji thing where you're like you hear it, it's pulsing if you have if you have the call. Like what is it? Yeah. What is it? You still say Jumanji like you're in a retirement home. <laughs> he went to the theater and saw Jumanji. Jumanji. I love Jumanji. I man. love that movie so much. Jumanji. Jumanji. Yeah. Here go. Here's put on a Jumanji. Yeah, put on. Go here. Go see a Star War or a Jumanji. Uh, Jumanji. Um, yeah, I think the book. When we find out that the book not selling is the reason that no one comes to the town, my head spun around. Just complete <laughs> and utter exorcism situation. Like I was like, "What are we talking about? Did all of a sudden nobody buy the book anymore?" And that's the like, mm -hmm. the the magic is in people purchasing a book. I, I just, like, that, are the people there, are they, re like, so many questions of that nature, but I do want to give a shout out to the Double Deckers real quick. Yeah. This is why it's important, BrambleJamPlus.com, if you're screaming at your, at your stereo right now, or your car speakers, or whatever, Jumanji. apparently, Bran, you don't take the wrapper entirely off the candy cane. Yeah. Which I didn't know. You didn't know that? You keep oh, it never, on yeah. the staff right. of the candy cane You're gonna hold. and you eat the hook. How have you been doing it? You just open the whole thing up and crunch really? away. So how yeah. does your hand not get sticky? It always gets sticky. What's right? it, what is With it the hook, the I would hold on to just the edge of it, the, 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 the hook around the sides. And then you just and then it didn't get sticky. Uh -huh. And then I just pop the end. The end the, Fascinating. The, no, I've yes. always done wrapper. I just peel it down. Exactly. The, yeah. The, Exactly. Yeah. You don't you don't go hook first. I feel like hook first, getting the wrapper off just the hook. Yeah, it's a lot. Of is, getting it, the wrapper it, off the hook's tough, but I feel like you'd you have left to break for the last, it would be the hardest. No. Cause no, because you so you're just to peeling peel. it down. You have so much to you work said, with. Once you get there, you pop it. It's the same pop. thing. It's peeling pop. My thing though is if you're doing if you're pulling the wrapper off the hook first, the P potential for breakage yeah, is high. Almost right? 100%. That's an operation situation. Buzz you buzz. Be a surgeon for that. Well, we did everybody. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> We're going to be back tomorrow with... What's your name about that one? It's, today? it's December 7th. The, the, the movies and mysteries. Right? Yes. The mahogany joints. Yeah. Uh, the holiday stocking. Holiday, holiday stocking. Stocks. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Until then, maybe the first to wish you a... Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Homework is the That Sounds Fun podcast. It's produced by Tracy Noah's name. It's recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. For more information on Deck the Homework, you can go to deckthehomework.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here at the studio. Feel free to listen. Feel free to turn it off, whatever you want to. But either way, thanks so much for your support.
Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Could surgeons use a patient's own anatomy to create 3D printed life-size organ models to map out challenges ahead of time, making surgery more precise, efficient, and less invasive? Is it possible? It already is. Because every day we're doing what's never been done. Learn more at mayoclinic.org possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go.